09, whichever MTEL math exam you're going to be taking. This is a, an exciting time. These videos are help you get ready. Review a, a quick concept and then study it, practice it, and then when you see it on the test, you're going to have success. If uh, these videos aren't enough, you can obviously do the private one-on-one -on -one tutoring, or you can sign up for one of the MTEL math workshops in Harvard Square, and those are fun, and those are also a really positive experience for all the teachers that are involved. Um, and there are Harvard Square MTEL math workshops coming up this December, this January, throughout the whole year, and there's also MTEL math workshops that are you know other parts of Massachusetts. So I do encourage you, if you're interested in one of those, or the, work, or the tutoring, to contact me with the contact information here, or just enjoy this video and let me know that you enjoyed this video by saying, hey, this rocked. All right, let's start. Let's get going. Hi team, I want to start with this problem by looking at it using the right half of my brain, sort of looking only at the big details. So big picture thinking, big details, I see triangles. I see some of the triangles are shaded. All right, left side of my brain thinking. This is when I go into more closer details. I see uh, that one of the triangles has dimensions of four by four. So I could, uh, in theory, use uh, the area of a triangle using the base and the height. I see that there are arrows indicating that there's a pattern or sequence and that idea of a sequence or pattern is reinforced by this figure one, figure two, figure three, figure four. Okay, I'm going to go look for more details. This, one, this is when I get into the reading portion. Um, and this is definitely left side thinking here where I look at more specific details um, by reading the question. If the pattern above continues so I am dealing with patterns. What is the combined area of the shaded region, the six figure? Okay, great. So just by looking at the images, even before I read the question, I got an idea that this had to do with triangles and had to do with area of a triangle. Now, when I went into closer detail, I reinforced those observations by picking up the dimensions of the triangle, by noticing uh, that there were sequences involved, and that led me to the idea that this did have to do with patterns and this, uh, and I am going to have to find the area of that triangle, or more specifically, the sixth shape of that triangle. Take a moment, review left brain, right brain thinking. I always want to get the big picture, the right brain, and the details with the left brain. Okay, great. Let's continue. One way to think about this problem as, is as a fraction problem, a part to whole question. So let's start there. That's very important that we, we have a starting point. Here I have one triangle. It's figure one. It's, uh, the whole thing is, is left blank, so out of my whole, there's no parts that are shaded, so it's just 0 over 1. Now this next one, it's made up of two parts and one part is shaded, so that's one half. The third one is a little trickier. The third one is, let's see, this part is shaded and this part is shaded. Now, it's not 100% intuitive, but, you know, I've seen, you know, third, fourth graders do this. Let's just take our pizza pie or, and cut it one more piece, so now I have four congruent shapes. So I think then, at that point, it's a lot easier to say, hey, there are four parts of which three are shaded. This one's three-fourths. Three-fourths of this triangle here are shaded. And we could do the same thing for the, third, uh, for the fourth one here. The fourth one, however, is divided into smaller shapes, and if, if we followed out that same pattern, dividing the larger shapes into smaller congruent shapes, we come up with that, you know, this one has eight parts, of which seven are shaded. And let me just show you really quickly how to do that on the actual problem itself. Just so, um, you know, I think it's important just to see this. I, all I needed to do was draw the line here, so I had four. Three out of four now are, are shaded. And this one right here, this just means me going and picking the smallest shape that's there, the small triangle, and dividing every, the whole shape into small triangles. So now, um, figure four is made up of uh, eight parts, of which seven are shaded. So, I'm on my way to solving this problem. I do have a, a method to solve this, but uh, if we think about this now in terms of algebra, algebra means that we're looking at patterns. So is there a pattern here? One half, three fourths, seven eighths? I think there is. I think if we could even put these in a table of values if we wanted to. I don't necessarily think this helps, but figure one, figure two, figure three, figure four, 
we could we could say this is zero, one half, you know, three fourths, um, seven eighths. This is definitely one way to organize it. I don't think this is totally going to be 100% helpful because it leads to a bunch of other things that you might be thinking of slope, you might be thinking of a whole bunch of other things where you would use a table of values, but it is, um, it is a pattern and so it definitely does involve algebra and we could use that to solve it, but we're not going to. Um, let's continue with this idea here. I see the patterns, I have the visuals. One thing I notice is that the denominator in each one of these cases is doubling. Does everyone notice that? It's going from 1 to 2 to, th uh, to 4 to 8. And then another thing I notice is that the numerators is always one less than the denominator. So if we were to continue out this pattern, of course, of course we could, you know, take our shape and basically divide the triangles up again one more time. And we would get, doubling the 8, we would get 16 parts of which 15 are shaded. I think at this point it's more important to find the pattern than to actually divide up the shape. What would be the next one? Well, if we followed out the pattern the same way, we would be doubling the denominator, so that would get us 32, and we would be, uh, be, that would be one less than the numerator, so in this case it would be 31. Okay, so at the end of the day I have this triangle which has 32 little triangles, of which 31 are shaded. I'm not even going to try and draw that. You have to use your imagination.